Hi there. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call tonight's meeting to order tonight's public hearing. Um, if Marissa, could you please take us through the roll call? Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Tara Figueroa. Ashley Pascarella. Present. Melissa Oseglio. Present. Jonathan Trapp. Present. Amanda Wagner. Here. Dan Wisniewski. Present. Lincoln Johnson. Present. Susan Neal. And James Cordon. Uh, present. All right, excellent. So we do have a quorum, so we can go ahead and get started with our first public hearing. The first item on the agenda before we open it up to the public is actually to give a quick announcement regarding EDIT's logo competition. Ashley, would you like to say a few words about that? Is this open? It's not open to the public or it is? It is, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so we we are a new committee. We are a new task force. We don't have a logo yet. And so one of the first competitions and art projects we'd kind of like to do is to open up the community and have a logo competition where we'd like to invite everyone to design the logo for edit. Um, I'm hoping we'll have like a formal um, announcement after our meeting next week on our Facebook page website, um, and we'll put it out there. But I'm hoping that the schools will be involved, um, any students, anybody in the community that feels like they have a, a feeling and an artistic feeling about what they think the logo for edit should be would participate. And um, we don't have the link that it's going to be yet. But we, like I said, there will be like a little bit more detail um, after our formal meeting next week. And we hope that everyone would get involved and express their arts and design the logo for edit. That's about it. Thank you so much, Ashley. It's going to be a, such a nice opportunity to get the community engaged. Um, certainly looking forward to seeing the submissions that we get once the official details are out. Okay, so without further ado, um, we're going to go ahead and move to the, the, the public comment. Um, for members of the community that are looking to um, to speak tonight, I just would like to mention a few housekeeping rules. Um, so the first thing is um, the comments that you share tonight. Of, we're, we'd like that we'd like to ask that that be related to Edit's mission. So we're you know open to any suggestions that you have um, with regard to how our committee can support creating a more vibrant equitable, diverse, and inclusive tremble. Um, we ask that you please be respectful. There will not be a time limit for speakers, so please feel free to use um, the opportunity to just give us your thoughts. Okay, um, so if you'd like to speak, I believe there is a raise hand function if you're joining via the Zoom app. If you're joining us via uh, telephone, you would just press star nine. A L E G. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Ellie Grasso. I don't know if this is like a town meeting where I have to announce uh, things, but I live in town. I have three children in the Trumbull, Trumbull Public Schools. Um, it just so happens that my family is made up of uh, two biological sons and one daughter who was adopted from Ethiopia. So the, um, the issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion are especially important to me. And it's really a gift that my daughter uh, has given me, one of the many, uh, that I am focused on these issues in a different way than I would be or I would have been if my family hadn't 
grown into what it is and who it is. So I'm honored and happy to do the work uh, specifically focused on anti-racism. I'm involved in several different groups in the area and have been for many years. Uh, and I'm very excited to form a group under the umbrella, I would assume, of the edit task force. And it could be a number of different things. I'm in several book groups. Where's my book? Right now, we're reading Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, which is a book I think that should be a required reading for every American. It's truly profound. Um, I I haven't read I haven't um, led a book group on cast, but I have been in a book group, and I did just um, just arrived a a workbook uh, that goes through the book. So we can do that. I don't know if that's something that's already been discussed, and we certainly don't have to start with cast. But I honestly don't know why we wouldn't. Um, I'm in other groups where we take on a different topic every month. And um, so it's, it's a, uh, a split between sort of education and discussion. So um, most of these things I've been involved with, uh, the post COVID world, the way we've done it is Zoom and it works out great. Frankly, a lot of things I am involved in that I wouldn't be involved if we had to meet in person due to my three kids and my other busy life of working mom and that sort of thing. So um, I find that it really is very meaningful when people are able to discuss their experiences, their learning experiences. I think it's important to note, as we have noted in different the different groups that I am, that everyone is at a different point in on the road to uh, learning about our our true history or uh, you know our holistic history of of the nation um and by the way i think while it's difficult to learn those things it's imperative and i think that it it ultimately has made me more patriotic um because i do think that the country even considering what's happening now is really fighting to be what its its creed professes it to be. Um, and there's pride in that for me. So I guess I'm just, uh, there's a number of different things that we can do, but I do think that it's important. I think that there's a void right now in our town where that is not happening. I go to Fairfield, I go to Westport, I go to Bridgeport in order to engage in these kinds of groups. And I feel really confident that, that once we do this in Trumbull, because I know we will, it's, it will uh, be well received. And um, I'm busy, but I really would like to be a part of it on, on some level. I think that's, I think really that's all I have to say. I've been emailing Amanda and Melissa and Tara over the months saying, what about this? Or I'm doing this thing. I th think this would be great in Trumbull. So um, I, I really appreciate the volunteerism of everyone on this task force. And I hope that I can be um, a worker bee for you to help this work uh, begin and continue in Trumbull. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ellie. If there's anybody else who'd like to speak, just press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And maybe while we're we're waiting, um, Ellie, I had failed to actually um, ask that you please state. Oh, she's gone. I just was trying to capture her address for the minutes, but um, moving forward, we can. I'll, I'll bring it back in. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry, my address, Tara? Please, just for the minutes. Of course, I'm at 24 Indian Road. Thank you again. Some excellent initiatives and, and great suggestions, Ellie. Thank you.
Hey, Miss Fleming and Miss Presley's coming in after. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Shala Fleming. I live at 19 Coventry Lane in Trumbull. Um, I am excited to be here this evening. I actually sort of late game found out about the meeting, but I'm glad that I did. Um, I've lived in Trumbull for just over eight years now. Um, and I was incredibly excited to learn that this task force had come together. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad to be here now just to, to be able to speak um, a little bit. Um, I, am, I have seen uh, an increase in the diversity of Trumbull since I moved here eight years ago, which feels um, really good and nice. Um, and I also um, happen to have in the sort of midst of everything that's happened over the last um, year or so, um, started a Facebook group for black moms here in Jumbo. Um, and so I think that speaks to part of what I want to share, which is um, the importance of um, affinity groups. Um, and so in several of the nonprofit organizations that I've worked for, and I presume this probably happens in, in corporate America as well, um, in an effort to sort of um, help with diversity, equity, inclusion, um, one of the, the sort of tactics can be to, to build affinity groups. Um, and that might seem like counterproductive because an affinity group of course suggests that people of the same or identify as the same race are coming together, uh, but they can actually be helpful um, in building comfort and helping the people to feel included right within a larger community. Um, and so I don't, um, know a whole lot about what you all are planning to do. And I assume that part of what uh, you're doing tonight is, is getting some ideas. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, I think if there was something that could be done more at the town level um, to build affinity groups out, I think that would be uh, wonderful. The, the group for moms um, that I started was very well received. Um, and I also assume that there are more black moms out there that just have not found the page yet or we haven't connected with. Um, and so if there was some larger, I think, effort um, to, to help the, um, the, the folks of color who live in town to kind of find each other and be able to connect um, helps with the, the inclusion piece of, of DEI. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to just speak to is, um, is uh, public schools. Um, part of the reason why my husband and I moved here to Shumbo, we lived in Bridgeport for many, many years. Um, one of the reasons we moved here was um, for the school system. Um, we knew that we were gonna be losing out on um, uh, our children growing up with, with more students who look like them, um, but we made the choice being um, what we had heard and, and sort of seen in terms of the strength of education in Shumbo. Um, and to date, we've been very pleased um, with, with the experience, uh, we have a fifth grader and a first grader at Tashua School and we will have a kindergartner in a couple of years. Um, so we've been very pleased with the experience. Um, and the one thing that I would love to see um, is increased diversity amongst the teaching staff within the public schools here in Jumbo. Um, I, of course, don't know how all of the, the teachers and staff at Tashua School identify, um, but as I look at them and perhaps make some assumptions, um, I don't believe that any of the classroom teachers are people of color. Um, and I'm fairly certain there is a small number of, of uh, support staff um, who are, um, but I would love for my children to be able to see more people who look like them within their school's community. Um, of course, in the, the children around them, which has definitely increased over time since my daughter started kindergarten, um, but also in the teachers who are providing them with such an amazing education. Um, so thank you all for listening. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for sharing that. Those, both of those experiences and representation is incredibly important. So. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan, did you have something to say? I, I don't know whether it's appropriate to ask uh, questions of uh, the folks who are kind enough to share their thoughts with us, but I was curious to learn the size of the Facebook page, the, the number of participants, if, uh, if that's all right. Uh, yes, so we have uh, just over 20 members 
um, and uh, hoping, of course, to, to find more. I, I know that there are others out there, even in some of the parents in my, my children's school who I just have not been able to sort of find and connect with given the circumstances. Um, but yes, eager, eager to, to grow the group. And um, again, it's been very well received and I know it's provided just a big sense of, of comfort um, for, for, um, for the moms who, who you know, love this town, but feel on the out sometimes. Um, and so being able to, to feel connected with other moms who identify in the same way has been really important. Thank you. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, just curious, uh, um, what are some of the activities that your group uh, does together, participates in, that kind of thing? <laughs> Sure. So uh, much of it actually has um, just kind of been in the Facebook page. So looking for resources, um, asking for ideas, um, recommendations for doctors, dentists, um, and things like that. We have had a couple of, of meetups um, where moms have come together. Um, one was in person, one was virtual. Um, and we are planning to and, and hoping to be able to do more of that as you know things become safer from a health perspective. Um, but opportunities to be able to bring moms together, bring our kids together, bring families together, um, to just grow, grow a network in a sense of, of, of community within the community. Thank you. Excellent. So I think we can uh, move to the next speaker from the public. I just, I don't, I'm, I'm sure I'm not supposed to call on people, but I saw Lincoln had his hand up. I don't know if the question was for me or not, but I didn't want oh, to say if it was. Actually, Chell, I was going to tell you, I have an excellent recommendation for a dentist for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is it you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The next speaker uh, is Jessica Presley. Hi, my name is Jessica Presley. Um, I live at 80 Stonehouse Road. Um, I grew up in Trumbull, um, moved away, and then moved back to Trumbull when I got the divorce. So I've been in, back in Trumbull since 2012. Um, I have four children, and my eldest um, identifies as trans. And um, I, I'm also a teacher. I've taught in New Haven for 14 years and Bridgeport for three. I teach at a school called Common Ground High School. It is a social justice and environmentally focused high school. Um, and I'm just happy to be here, um, hoping to perhaps at some point share my experience as a parent with a trans child in the um, public school system um, and some you know, some struggles with um, bathrooms and things like that. Um, so I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm happy to kind of continue the work that I do um, with my high schoolers um, and hopefully um, just kind of help with inclusivity um, in Trumbull. Thank you much. Thank you so much for sharing, Jessica, and joining us tonight. Thanks. Okay, the next speaker is uh, Matt Brassia. How are you doing tonight? Um, I'm here because I'm a teacher at Trumbull High School, and, uh, and I was prompted to speak um, by uh, by um, the, the previous speaker uh, before before Mrs. Presley. Um, uh, I just wanted to to reiterate what she was saying about um, about representation. Uh, one of the things that uh, a bunch of us at the high school and in the school district. Uh, realize is that we have a real diversity problem with the teachers and uh, and we have started to ask the new superintendent and the Board of Education to form a committee that would be um, under the auspices of the board which is going to look into um, issues of, of diversifying not only our faculty but also taking a look at uh, discipline policies um, looking at curriculum and uh, and 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 um, text that we are using as well. 
uh, among other things. Uh, we have met with uh, Dr. Semmel, who is the new superintendent, uh, a couple of times, and he is uh, interested in making this happen. He has made this one of his goals for the year to start this committee uh, and get it off the ground. Um, I, I do want to ask all of you who are here today to, um, to offer any support that you can. Uh, it's taking a while to get the committee off the ground. Um, he spoke to a group of high school teachers today and, um, and when the subject came up, he said that he was planning on having Dr. Bud um, as part of that committee uh, heading it up. And as you may know, Dr. Bud has uh, recently left and we just, uh, we're actually waiting for our new assistant superintendent to begin working. She has been hired, but she hasn't started working yet. And so his plan is to have her at the head of that committee. Um, and we're also going to be working with CERC, which is a regional educational um, uh, entity uh, that is run by the state and, and helps to coordinate things um, in a regional manner. Um, and so I'm, I'm very optimistic that we will have this committee, which will act as a steering committee in place before the end of the year and hopefully we'll be able to begin to address those kinds of, of issues. Um, other things that's happening at the high school right now is that we are working with the ADL to become a no place for hate school, um, which is an uh, 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 initiative started by the ADL where they work with individual schools, a very small number of schools. And the reason why is because they want to be able to help schools make this transition and make sure that they get the support that they need in order to um, in order to become more than a no place for hate school in name only but to actually become a school that believes in these things and um, and so we've we've rolled out the first step to um, to be to, to becoming this no place for hate school uh, by uh, rolling out a pledge to all of the faculty and all of the students and we are in the process of, of getting students and faculty to sign on to this pledge, and um, and we have a uh, we have a, a, a plan to have students engage in some uh, some training for for teachers uh, about issues having to do with uh, gender diversity, uh, racial diversity, um, and so I'll be very curious to see how how that goes as well. Um, and, and finally, uh, another thing that we are trying to start at school is a club that is focused on social justice issues. Um, and, uh, and, and I'm working with um, one of the guidance counselors, one of the um, uh, guidance counselors, Vivaldi Demas, on getting this started. We've met with a, a group of students who are interested in kind of heading this project. And um, that was right before the break. So we have to touch base with them again now after the break, probably at the beginning of the next semester. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get that started. Um, I'm very happy to be here today and to, um, and to be able to speak to all of you um, and to hear about the support in the community. Um, and, uh, and, and if you get the chance, just to, um, just to reiterate your support to the Board of Education and the superintendent and say that you know that these are things that are in the works and that you are looking forward to when they actually happen um, and just uh, just keep that ball rolling um, you know with with all the distractions that are happening with the budget audit and the global pandemic and the turnover at central office um, I, I don't want to get I don't want this to get lost in the shuffle there uh, and that's 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 about it thanks Thank you very much, Matthew, for joining. Certainly, we'll continue our work with the BOE and um, Superintendent Semmel to ensure that this remains a priority. There's uh, any other. If any other residents would like to speak, um, please press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Tara, it also looks like there's a few QAs. I'm sorry, Bill, I missed the last thing that you mentioned. Uh, it looked like there's a few uh, items in the question and answer. Oh, in the Q&A section. Thank you so much. Let me just take a peek there. Uh, uh, this is from our previous speaker, Chala Fleming. She actually um, had a question regarding the Coalition for Social Justice that 
Matt Bresick had just um, mentioned during his comments on uh, opportunities to be able to participate. Um, Matt, do you have a sense yet? I know you said it's just getting started. Is the coalition also inclusive of parents as contributors, or will this remain at the staff level? No, I, I believe that the, that the ultimate formation of the committee is going to be one that is made up of all stakeholders. Um, and so parents and other community members, I believe, are going to be tapped for that. I don't know what the process is just yet for, um, for selecting that, but, uh, but if, you're, if you're interested in, um, in, in having your name added to a list, I've got a running list of people who have expressed some interest to me that I would be happy to pass that along to the superintendent for, um, for when he does that. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll type my email address in the, um, in the comments and, um, and, and you can definitely email me there. That would be great, thank you. Ashley, did you have a question? He answered it. I was gonna see if he could either post or post his email and that was, he, he did it, so I'm good, thank you. Um, um, Ms. Fleming also had a, a second comment to um, just correct the number of members that she has in the Black Moms of Trumbull group. Uh, it's actually closer to 40, so double than what she had mentioned to us earlier. Thank you so much. As we wait for others to um, hopefully be able to join um, and share their comments with us tonight, I would like to mention that we do have our next regular meeting on Thursday, next Thursday, January 21st. So if you're watching this and maybe it's a recording because you're not able to catch us live tonight, um, for all of our regular meetings that we host, there is an opportunity for public comment. So if you um, would like to join us, next week at 7.30 p.m. there will be an opportunity at the beginning of the meeting for you to join us and share any additional, um, any thoughts that you have. Um, Ellie would like to make another comment. Oh, I, I mean, I I will make my comment if there's other people who would like to speak. I can't. The view that that the um, participants have is we can't see the number of people who are on. We can't even see you uh, unless we're speaking, and then we see the Hollywood Squares thing. So, um, anyway, I um um. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say is um, I should have reached out to my friends to let them know this was happening. Normally, I get an email from the town to say, you know, I don't even know if I do get an email from the town saying there's a board of education. There's so many meetings. I'm sure I don't get a meeting uh, for everything that's happening, but I'm certain that there are people in town who would be interested in being a part of this conversation? So I, I, I'm not sure. It's, since it's a new uh, group, you know, there's a lot of people who probably don't know this is happening. I would not have known if I hadn't just been uh, focused on it or didn't know some people on the on the task force. So um, one of the things we can do is figure out a way to make the group's meetings and the work on on the um, on people's radar so that when this kind of you know get together is happening we know about it and, and we're aware because I like I said I can't see the number of people on the call but I, I know even as I'm sitting here now I, I want to text 20 friends and let them know it's happening. Um, oh Ashley. 
Hi. Hey, go ahead. We had this conversation so many times. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions? Because I feel like we um, we put it out in just the Trumbull groups that we kind of know about. Um, I mean, mainly social media because COVID has obviously put a restriction on the availability of physically seeing right. people and putting flyers up. Because I mean, I don't go anywhere really. And I know a lot of people don't. So if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear it. I Social media, you know, I think the best way to get people to come is to reach out to them individually. Um, you know, just like when you're trying to get people to come out and vote, it's, the, it's shown to be the most successful way. I personally, after the election, I, I don't have Facebook on my phone, you know, I've taken it off. Um, so I think there may be some people who are not connecting to some of those um, social media sites. So I, I would say, you know, and they told two friends and they told two friends and so on and so on. It's like the, the commercial, uh, whatever, for the hair <laughs> shampoo. Uh, but I think, yeah, if we can, if we can all sort of set our tentacles out into the community and let uh, people know that the meetings are happening and that they're important to attend. I know that the regular meeting that you have on Thursday nights, I can't attend those meetings because those are the nights that I am doing my other anti-racism work. It just so happens Thursday's the popular night, uh, which is unfortunate, which is why I was excited I could come. Is tonight Thursday? Yes. So every other Thursday is a <laughs> is is a meeting I have to come to. But I just think that this is not a a, a, a group like other groups in town. It's it doesn't involve your money, you know, not directly anyway. It's um, so it's really I think it's going to um, really be incumbent upon all of us to let people know to to tune in so that they can be a part of the conversation. Absolutely. Amanda. Well, if I know anything about, um, if I know anything about really getting the word out, word of mouth goes such a long way. So certainly even after this meeting, um, we are on Facebook now. Um, all of our meetings and such are posted on, um, on the Trumbull government website. And we'll continue to find innovative ways through either community programming and other initiatives that we're doing to get the word out. So not just to interact with the things that we're working on through our, um, you know, our public hearings. This will not be the only one. I am sure that we'll have to figure out another um, additional ones to hold throughout the year, um, as well as the regular meetings that we host. But thank you so much. I, can I just say one more thing? that it inverse conversations what i've learned is that conversations around race can be very awkward for people if they haven't had them before and so one of the things is to is that you know the leaders of the group i think are, are going to have to model the that comfort and how important it is and um, let people know that you know it gets easier and it gets better, and how critical it is to just step into it and uh, you know make mistakes. Because I'm I'm 53. When I I was raised, you know we don't we don't want to make people uncomfortable. But this is a new day, and we realize that we can't afford that. So you know I think that when we are sending out these invites, especially to people who may not have stepped into these kinds of conversations before that we make a special effort to, um, you know, let them know that they're starting in the low end and um, that, that it'll be okay. Thank you so much, Shelly. Um, Amanda, did you have a comment? Otherwise, I think we have a couple of speakers that Yep, I just wanted to thank Ellie for popping in because I always think that she has some really good insights to share with the town. Um, but I did want to also note that the the public hearing was advertised on the website, which if you get the emails that like tell you that certain um, committees are happening, you will get it because I got it on my other email address, my personal <laughs> that said that I had a public hearing tonight. I was like, oh, hey, what do you know? Um, so you can definitely sign up. So if you want to go on to the town website and um, subscribe to any of those emails for any of the committees, um, you'll get okay. any of their events that are happening. 
I'm going to do that right now. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I just I'll... wanted to share that. And also, this is our first public hearing. Um, we are going to probably have more in the future. So even though it might be a slow start right now, like please spread the word to those 20 friends that you have, because we're going to probably do this again, um, because we're always growing in diversity, equity, and inclusion. It doesn't stay the same every day, right? It constantly is shifting and adjusting. And so we want to keep hearing from you all um, throughout our process that we're in this committee. Just in the minutes, please note, I actually have more than 20 friends, but those were 20 friends I was specifically thinking of. Thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's great. Thank you again, Ellie. Um, okay. I see that there is a question um, for Cindy Burns. I don't know if Cindy would like to actually speak. Uh, Ms. Burns, if you'd like to speak, you can raise your hand uh, at the bottom of your screen. Um, and I'll just add about the town website. Um, if you go to the town website and then hover over how do I, and then in the sign up for column, there's a item called notify me. Um, that's where you can create a, an account for the website and subscribe to all the different items on the website. So if you want to be notified when there's a meeting update about uh, a new meeting being posted or an agenda or minutes for that meeting, uh, you can click on that. Another one that you should consider is registering for the town news feed. Um, those are the items in the news articles that are posted on the homepage. So when something new gets posted there, you'll receive an email about that. Um, and it's really the best way to stay uh, in contact. There are two questions in the Q&A, um, both related to the same topic. Um, one member of the community is inquiring whether or not we have an email distribution list, I, I guess sort of like a subscribe, um, where events can be shared for people who are not on social media. So something to consider there. And there's a, a second comment regarding the email list as well. I can read off the comment from Cindy Burns, which was popped into the Q&A. Um, Cindy Burns of 14 Aragon Drive has asked, has there been discussion about ways to attract a more diverse group of small business owners in Trumbull's commercial areas? And Tara, I'll also note that um, Edit has an email address for members of the community to email the commission, uh, the task force rather, um, and I believe that's edit at trumbull-ct.gov, and um, those will go to Tara, and Tara can share that with the rest of the team. That's right. Thank you so much for mentioning that. That inbox is uh, regularly monitored, and so any communications or suggestions that you have uh, in between meetings, you can email us there and um, we will share that during our the following uh, regular meeting. I'm still on the screen, so would you mind repeating that email address? Uh, of course, it's edit, so uh, just like the acronym EDIT at Trumbull dash ct dot gov. Thank you. So I think we can give it maybe just 
five more minutes or so to ensure that anyone um, who might want to comment has the opportunity to do so. Is that, is that okay with everyone if we wait just a few minutes longer to see if anyone um, feels compelled to, to raise their hand? And sure, uh, Scott, Scott Kerr is coming in. Oh, excellent. Hi all, how are you? Um, my name is Scott Kerr. I live at 12 Lynbrook Road and uh, I just I couldn't let the opportunity pass to to come on and and thank, you know, first of all, our town council for uh, having the courage and taking the initiative to form your task force. And then um, all of you individually um, for volunteering to serve as uh, leaders in this important work. Um, I, I think as founding members of this task force, uh, you're gonna carry a particular weight of uh, setting the course for those that come after you. Um, and there certainly will be those that come after you because I think you're charged with solving uh, problems that have been created over centuries and uh, there's no quick fix, right? And it's gonna be a lot of uh, hard work. And I think in, in listening to the comments this evening, it was, it was very interesting to hear Shala's comments about the importance of affinity groups and finding ways to make people comfortable. Um, and then some of the things that Ellie said that, that I'm, I've certainly become aware of uh, on, on my journey is it also requires a great deal of discomfort. Um, there, there, um, I, I grew up thinking of myself as a pretty uh, progressive, uh, never would think of myself as a racist. Um, I, I wore it as a badge throughout most of my life. And in the last year, I think I've come, uh, come to learn that operating uh, in our current system as a white male, uh, particularly one that grew up in lower uh, Western Connecticut, um, I've got privileges that, uh, that uh, many of my friends don't even. Um, and so I think that uh, what I really, I hope that, I know you take that work seriously, your charge seriously, um, but I would encourage you to push us as a community and push us as individuals um, to, to do the work required um, to grow and become, uh, to truly become anti-racist. Um, because I've, you know, I've come to understand that just um, you know, being non-racist or um, you know, being colorblind was the way I always couched my life uh, is, not, is not enough. So um, anyway, I really, really appreciate your work and the fact that you're holding this uh, public hearing. And I think your ongoing, your regular meetings, your public comment hopefully will expand. And you're already talking about lots of other ways to gather input from the community. And, and you're clearly attracting some people that are interested in it and are, are willing to do the work. So leverage us uh, fully. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your comments, Scott. That's such an important reminder in terms of, you know, the, not just the importance of the work, but just, I love that, you know, pushing the boundaries, really being able to be bold um, in a way that seeks to unify the community. Absolutely. Scott, just for our um, minutes, if you would mind just giving your address and could you state for the record the position you hold in another town board, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that, that I was I'm not speaking as a member of the Board of Education, but thank you for, uh, for flagging that. I am a member of the Board of Education here in Trumbull and I live at 12 Lindbrook Road. Thank you, sir. Yep. 
And once again, if you uh, care to make a comment, you can press the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. Hi, Sue, how are you? I'm so glad that you could join us tonight. Um, Sorry, I just got in from work. No problem. Marissa, if you could just update the record to show that our uh, committee member, Sunil, has joined as well. I will. Yes. Um, Tara, um, while this does not answer uh, Cindy's question uh, exactly, you um, you might just want to uh, explain that we are meeting with all the stakeholders in um, in town and gathering information. Um, uh, that and you know at some point we might be able to answer Cindy's question but um, uh, right now we're in the beginning stages as this is a new group and and we're just getting started thank you so much Dan that's a great point Ashley did you have a comment as well sorry um, Jonathan I was going to take advantage of the silence uh, as I thought we were winding down, but but now I see a person important to me wants to make a comment. But um, uh, I, I would just say that I wanted to thank all of those who have attended our public hearing, both those who spoke and also those who listened. Uh, I think it's great that we had uh, all those folks turn out. Um, Gabby Trout. Would you like to make comment? My name's Gabby Tropp. I'm uh, at 27 Salem Road in Trumbull. Um, I didn't come with the expectation that I would speak at the forum. I just sort of wanted to listen, but first I want to say um, and sort of echo the thank you for the work that you guys are doing. Um, I wanted to sort of underscore that um, I think one of the, the places in our town that could perhaps most use a little bit of encouragement in the right direction and support as some changes are made are the Trumbull Public Schools. I'm so proud to have grown up in this town and to have learned what I have in our school system. Uh, but I think that one thing to keep in mind is that the task force is an amazing group of adults and um, to allow yourself to be steered by some of what students are expressing they need might be a great place for the task force to, um, to act. And so um, providing some sort of like a secret mailbox where people can sort of anonymously put in like these are programs we might like to see these are issues we're facing in school I think is one um, way to sort of get some outreach without asking students to come to public forums where they might be a little sort of um, hesitant to speak uh, but uh, also that um, the schools are such um, a great place to explore the world and learn and that um, I know so many people are grateful for the work that you guys are doing. And I think that that's a place to, to sort of focus some of those efforts. Thank you very much, Gabby, for joining us tonight to share your thoughts. And um, that's an awesome suggestion. And we'll certainly take it back to the group and discuss what sort of forums we might be able to provide to the community. Um, I certainly understand the, the need. Uh, Ms. Fleming is coming back in. Good evening again. Um, I just had an additional thought as I was um, listening to the other comments. Um, and someone just recently mentioned um, some sort of work where you're communicating with, with stakeholders to get input. Um, and I'm wondering if the committee would consider doing uh, some sort of a, a listening tour. Maybe that's what that person was speaking about. I'm not entirely sure, but 
Um, I think it could be valuable to hear um, from folks in town just about their experiences in a more concrete way. Um, uh, I, you know, everyone's experience is different, certainly, and just within the context of, of the group that I founded, um, e even amongst um, the women, th there have been very different experiences in terms of how they've been received in town, experiences that they've had, interactions that they've had, what neighbors have done and not done. Um, and so it's, it, I, think, I just think it could be helpful for, for the committee to have um, what I assume would be a little bit of a, a clearer sense as to what the experience has been. Um, for folks in town and just in a more concrete way. Thank you so much. It's a good idea. Um, this is Amanda Wagner. I just wanted to clarify because I think she had asked the question while she was you know, like um, providing some feedback for us about like what those stakeholder interviews like kind of looked like. So for folks who haven't gone to any of our edit meetings before, we um, as a task force decided to take the like our first initiative to interview folks within the town and specific departments, and they range from all all across the board, whether it's within social services, the board of education, EMS, um, human resources, the library, <laughs> the list can go on and on. So, <laughs> and you can probably find it in our minutes. Um, but we decided to reach out to them to kind of find out what our department's already doing for diversity and inclusion work. How are they meeting the demand of our diversity of our town and how we can best support them and help them through maybe initiatives that they're struggling with. Um, and every week, well, every week, I'm so sorry, every month when we need, we give updates on how those interviews are going, if we're gonna continue having conversations with them, if there's certain projects that we're gonna work with with them, so I just wanted to give you some clarity about like what that looks like. And in a way, I think I would add that tonight's public hearing is one of, you know, the community being our most important stakeholder. Um, this is in, in line with that initiative of, of you know, soliciting input, um, really trying to understand without bringing any of our assumptions to the table as to what this town needs. Um, so this is an opportunity, and um, as we've said before, certainly and hopefully not the last one um, for for members and our committee to be able to engage um, in this sort of you know casual, not casual. I mean, it is more formal than having a, a cup of coffee with someone. But I think in, in all things considered, just having this open opportunity to be able to um, fly ideas. I think I'd be remiss also not to acknowledge that Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, and so as comments are starting to dwindle down, I would just like to um, take a moment to acknowledge um, the important legacy that he has left uh, in more than anything, I think, healing the wounds of a deeply divided nation during his time. Um, so as we, you know, all go about the, the rest of our um, lives, you know, following this call, just calling on um, those that are watching, um, our members, the community to, you know, just do one thing um, in order to commemorate the sort of life that he lived and to do right by the legacy that he left um, to try and, and leave our community in a much better place. If there are no other comments, I would like to, um, in, in light of Jonathan, um, I, I think you said it best, um, but yes, definitely on behalf of our committee, um, I just want to sincerely thank everyone who has come forward tonight, um, both listening in, engaging with our forum, um, and the many members of the community, the community that have spoken and shared your experience and your ideas with us tonight. We will um, recap as a group um, in terms of what initiatives and brainstorm on them. So certainly it's um, looking into how we can make action from the suggestions that you've made tonight. Amanda, did you have a comment? Uh, Tara, it looked like Jessica. I was going to say that Jessica. 
<laughs> I had seen her hand raised, so I was just going to say she was yeah. coming. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Jessica. Hi, it's me again. Um, I just had one more thought. Um, I don't know if anyone here has heard of CEIO, um, Co-Creating Effective and Inclusive Organizations, um, CEIO, I believe they're out of New Haven. Um, they've done work with my school, um, giving workshop workshops on implicit bias, as well as some others. Um, so I don't know if that's kind of something that we might want to connect with um, and see if they could further help support us. Excellent. Absolutely. That, that's great. And, and you said that C as in Charlie, is that right? C-E-I-O? C-E-I-O, and it stands for um, Co-Creating Effective and Inclusive Organizations. Thank you for sharing that, Jessica. Tara, would you like a motion to adjourn? If there are no other members um, of the community that would like to speak, I don't think we have any hands raised at this time. So um, I do think that's appropriate. Unless, Bill, are you seeing anything on your end? OK. Thank you all. I move to adjourn. Second. Excellent. Um, so it has been moved by Jonathan Trapp and seconded by Dan Wisniewski to adjourn tonight's public hearing. All in favor, please just indicate with a show of hands. Okay, excellent. Um, so we can let the record show that we're all set to go for tonight. Thank you.